DNS is used everywhere to connect services and apps, but it wasn't built with security in mind. How do you ensure that the records being returned from a resolver contain the correct information? And how can you protect from any malicious attacks on your DNS zones? DNSSEC, short for Domain Name System Security Extensions, is a suite of protocols on top of DNS that use cryptographic signatures to endorse records, ensuring that they aren't tampered with. First, let's define a few terms that are used to describe keys and cryptography that will help you understand what is happening in DNSSEC. If you are already familiar with key pairs and hashing, feel free to skip to the next section. A cryptographic signature is created using something called a key pair, which is a set of both a public and private key. The private key is used to create the signature, and the public key is used to verify the signature. This intrinsically links the key pair to the signature and is what makes DNSSEC's signing and verification of DNS data possible. Hashing is a technique used to obscure plain text strings. A hash is the result of this process, which takes in any string and returns a fixed length string of pseudo-random characters. A fundamentally important aspect of the algorithm, or hash function, that gets used is that it is deterministic meaning that it will always return the same string for the same input. Hashing helps with security by encrypting the plain text string into this new string, and its deterministic nature means that the data can be verified. There are many moving parts and records involved in DNSSEC, and they all work together to protect from attacks on DNS zones. Let's first dive into defining each part, then zoom out to see the big picture where all of DNSSEC's many linkages come together to form one cohesive chain of trust. The first linkage in the DNSSEC chain of trust is something called the trust anchor. The trust anchor is a known and securely distributed public key that resolvers use as a starting point for the validation of DNSSEC signatures. DNSSEC validating resolvers are pre-configured to implicitly trust this key and often have it built in. The trust anchor is an ultimate point of known goodness, from which all other validations extend. Now that we know where the chain of trust starts, how does the rest of DNSSEC actually operate? Using a combination of different record types, DNSSEC's chain of trust starts to take shape. The first few records are fundamental in understanding the workings of DNSSEC and show how DNS records are signed. Instead of signing each record individually, similar records are grouped into what is called a resource record set, often shortened to RR set. The records in a resource record set share the same name and type. For instance, these have the same name and are both A records. Using a key pair, a signature for each resource record set in the zone is generated, referred to as a resource record signature. These signatures are used in combination with the public component of the key pair to verify the data in the resource record sets. Another important record type in DNSSEC is called a DNS key record. They are used to store the public component of a key pair and are referenced when validating RRSIG records. A DNS key record can hold two kinds of keys, a zone signing key or a key signing key. There are a few differences between the two. Zone signing keys are used to sign most records in your zone, and because they sign frequently changing data, zone signing keys are rotated relatively often. A key signing key is used to sign the DNS key record itself, and is rotated less often. The public key signing key is hashed and published by the parent zone as another record, called the Delegation Signer Record. This facilitates the chain of trust, since a resolver needs to have validation from the parent zone to even trust the keys from your zone. In fact, we've already talked about a particularly important key signing key. The trust anchor is the key signing key that the DNS root zone holds, and allows signing of zone signing keys for all other DNS zones down the chain of trust.
As mentioned before, a hash of your zone's public key signing key is held by its parent zone in a record called a delegation signer record. These connect your domain's identity to the global DNS system. A DNS resolver will use the DS record from a parent zone to validate your domain's signatures, and they function by having the parent zone hold the hash of your zone's key signing key, publishing it as one of these records. This is used alongside a resource record signature and a resource record set of DNS key records in your zone to verify that the DNS key records, and therefore the zone signing keys and key signing keys in your zone, are valid. This is an integral part of the chain of trust that allows parent zones to vouch for the integrity of signatures coming from a child zone, ensuring that information from your zone is verified and correct. Earlier, when talking about zone signing keys and key signing keys, we touched on rotating the keys for your zone. This is an important step in securing your zone and happens quite frequently for zone signing keys. Key signing keys aren't rotated as often, but when they are, it would be a manual operation to signal the parent zone that your zone's key signing key is being rotated. This is a point of error that can be reduced by using two other records, child delegation signer records and child DNS key records. These records signal to the parent zone that a change in DNS set keys is occurring and will automatically tell it to update the DS record it holds accordingly. Using these records will help prevent issues that can make your domain unreachable to DNSSEC-aware resolvers. When using unsigned DNS, queries from a resolver to non-existent domains and records are returned with errors non-existent domain or no data. DNSSEC differs because it needs to validate these denial errors, or else an attacker can exploit it to redirect traffic and hide legitimate services. This is where two more records, NextSecure and NextSecure version 3 are used. As the names imply, NextSecure version 3 is a newer version of NextSecure. NextSecure solves this problem in a simple but clever way. In a DNS zone that has all of the names sorted in canonical DNS name order, a non-existent name B that would fall between existing names A and C would return with an error if queried, saying that the name B does not exist. This is endorsed by a next secure record, which states that the next record after name A is name C. Because name B would have fallen between names A and C, next secure is stating that there is no name B, and provided that the record is signed, this is definitive proof to a resolver that the name B does not exist in that zone. Now we know how NextSecure works, but what are the differences between NextSecure and NextSecure version 3 records? NextSecure records use a direct link between two names, containing the current name as well as the next name in canonical order. Storing the names as plain text, this opens up NextSecure records to security vulnerabilities, specifically an attack called zone walking, where an attacker can repeatedly query for non-existent names and use the next secure links to reconstruct all names in the zone. Next secure version 3 records differ by encrypting the names as hashes that include additional security features such as salting, where a known random string is added to the name, and iterations, or the number of times the hash function is applied. Next secure version 3 links the hash names to each other, meaning the hash of name B cannot exist between the hashes of name A and name C. Also unlike NextSecure, which only returns one record to a resolver, NextSecure version 3 returns two records, one for the closest hash name before the hashed query name, and one for the closest hash name after the hashed query. A resolver uses both of these NextSecure version 3 records to cryptographically prove the non-existence of the hashed query name. An extra record called Next Secure Version 3 Parameters contains information about the behavior in Next Secure Version 3, like the hash algorithm being used, the number of iterations, and the salt that is added to the strings before being hashed. There's also a section for flags, such as one called Opt Out, which allows zones with lots of insecure delegations 
to opt out of publishing NextSecure version 3 records for insecure child zones. Opt out does change the validation of non existent zones, but makes managing a domain with many of these insecure delegations easier. Now that we have covered all of the types of records one might encounter when using DNSSEC, let's circle back to the chain of trust that I've been mentioning. The chain of trust is multifaceted and uses all of the different parts of DNSSEC to establish itself. The chain of trust starts at the trust anchor, or the key signing key for the DNS root zone, published as a DS record. The top level domains publish their key signing keys and zone signing keys as a DNS key resource record set, along with the resource record signature, and the resolver uses them with the delegation signer record from the root zone to trust the top level domain's zone signing keys. Therefore, the resource record sets and resource record signatures that the top level domain publishes can be trusted, which includes a delegation signer record for your domain. The validation process then repeats, using the delegation signer record from the top level domain alongside your zone's DNS key resource record set and its corresponding resource record signature to verify your zone signing keys, providing validation for your resource record sets and resource record signatures. This keeps going to any DNSSEC enabled child zones, creating the DNSSEC chain of trust. Thanks to this, DNS is more secure and reliable for all. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us at support at dnsimple.com. Want to give DNSimple a try risk-free? Visit dnsimple.com slash signup. Need more information about how DNS works with DNSimple? Check out other videos on our channel and read our comic linked in the description. If you want more information about SSL SAN certificates, watch this video next.